A very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> so, till now, we have seen uh, very, very important subjects. We have covered almost uh, all of the major subjects. Uh, and now, we are still going to the other higher plane. We are going to see very in-depth and very important uh, subjects uh, which uh, a Christian should know. So, we all know and we all believe that uh, second coming of Jesus should happen. That Jesus should return the second coming and he has to rule on this earth for a thousand years. So, Bible clearly tells about the second coming of Jesus uh, that he will come on the clouds uh, with the sound of an archangel. So, every eye shall see him and he shall judge the world for a period of a thousand years. Uh, but before uh, the second coming of our Lord, the Bible clearly tells that uh, Antichrist uh, should come. So, first uh, the appearance of the Antichrist uh, should happen. Then, <clears throat> only and later on only, the second coming of Jesus should uh, happen. So, today we will study about uh, this uh, Antichrist. So, let us read a few verses in uh, Second Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verses 1 to 4. Uh, Joel brother, can you read one by one and go? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon second in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of a predison who... uh, see here uh, it clearly says uh, apostle paul uh, clearly tells uh, that uh, you see before you believe in the second coming of jesus uh, you see First, uh, there should be the revealing of the sin of man. So, it clearly says uh, that alone, let no man deceive you that the day of Christ is at hand. For that day should not come except there be a falling away first. First, uh, there should be a falling away. And then the son of man, uh, you see, the son is son of uh, the man of sin. So, the man of sin should be revealed. First, there should be a falling away, and then the man of sin uh, be revealed, the son of perdition. So, first, uh, Antichrist should come, Antichrist should be revealed. Then only the, you see, the second coming of Jesus should happen. Okay, now what will Antichrist come into? It's given in the next coming verses. Please continue with the Joel brother. Huh? who op upset and exalt uh, himself over all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Who opposeth, you see, and exalted himself above all that is called God is himself. See, you see, dear brethren, so Antichrist, he will come, he will exalt himself to such an extent that, uh, you see, he will, uh, you see, be called as God. You see, and uh, he will be worshipped as God. Uh, that uh, he will sit himself uh, in the temple of God, uh, dear Dren, uh, that every world, uh, the whole world shall worship him as God is him. So this is the work that Antichrist is going to do. So, all these things uh, will happen in a short period of uh, three and a half years, it seems. Uh, dear brethren, so in a short period of uh, three and a half years, uh, Antichrist will come and sit in the temple of God, you see, and claim himself to be God and everybody shall worship him, it seems. Uh, dear brethren, we all know that, uh, you see, that everybody will worship uh, one man, the Antichrist, uh, 
and he will sit uh, in the temple. Do you see? So where is the temple? If you see, the temple now is uh, in Jerusalem. So Antichrist will come. He will uh, destroy the mosque, uh, you see, that is there in uh, Jerusalem now. And he will build uh, the new temple and he will sit uh, in the temple, it seems, and make all the world to fall at his feet. Dear brethren, now we are living in a world, you see, where there is no much uh, space for uh, superstitious beliefs. Uh. But uh, the things that is told about Antichrist, uh, that everybody will fall and worship him as God and he will sit as God in the temple of God. These things uh, were uh, not even achieved 10% uh, by Alexander the Great, uh, not even by Napoleon Bonaparte or Caesars uh, of Rome uh, with such mighty power and which uh, such uh, superstitions, uh, orthodox beliefs during those days itself, uh, these great warriors could not achieve even 10% of what is told about the great Antichrist. And how can a man in this modern era fulfill all these things that are told by the Antichrist? And moreover, the construction of the temple, is it so easy? It will happen in three and a half years. Dear brethren, during the days of Jesus himself, this uh, construction of the temple took uh, 46 years. Uh, Jesus gives us reference in John 2.20. So, is it possible to build a temple and everybody should come there and worship him as a uh, God? Uh, if uh, a man builds a temple in Jerusalem, uh, will the Jewish people allow them? You see, and if anybody sits there and claims himself as God, will the Israel allow them? The people of Israel cast out Jesus from the temple, cast him out from the synagogue, just because he read a few verses and tell that uh, this is fulfilled today in your ears. When they cast out Jesus uh, and uh, nobody worshipped Jesus, how can and how will the whole world uh, see fall at uh, one's feet and worship uh, him, dear brethren? And moreover, as I told you, today the Doom of Rock is there, the mosque, you see, is there in uh, Jerusalem, the place and the site of uh, where the temple uh, of Solomon was built. Uh. Dear brethren, do you think the people will allow them to destroy this uh, mosque? Is it so easy? We have seen the warfare which is happening in uh, Israel and Gaza just because of a few things. Uh, and if somebody destroys the whole mosque and build a temple with the people keep quiet dear brethren you see so we need to study and we need to think and moreover you see the people think that the antichrist will come and what he will do he will put triple six seal he will put triple six seal on his head and and what is the triple six you see some people tell oh that brother there is a barcode if you see each and every barcode there is a double line you see three dummy Double lines are there. That uh, number is triple six. So one who doesn't have the seal, that means the barcode. So no transactions can be made in the future. No buying or selling. So no buying will happen. No selling will happen. Those who don't have the barcode at all. You see? And some people even claim that uh, that is the, you see, memory eh? chip. Uh, you see, a small chip uh, that is inserted into... A human being, you see, huh? they think that is the Antichrist. So each and every person will be tracked down. So each and every details like credit card, debit card, all their financial details, everything from top to bottom about a human being is, will be there in the chip. So anybody without the chip, they will be not allowed to leave. You see, so they will cause the rich and the poor to have this mark on the hand. They think that this is inserted in the hand. This is the mark of the beast. The mark of the Antichrist, uh, you see, and, even, and uh, some people even think that uh, this is the literal the six, uh, triple six, 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 they will come and put a seal on the head. Uh. Dear brethren, no, you know, the whole world knows uh, the number of Antichrist, uh, that it is triple six. Uh. You know, today, even the rooms, if you go uh, in uh, very portals and all, the number triple six is not there. Uh. It is totally taken off. Why? Because uh, six, six, six means 
it is antichrist number eh? even the vehicles also the people won't use it eh? even the mobile number also if you get triple six they said throw it off oh, because antichrist number eh? if anybody if everybody has so much equipped and uh, have knowledge about antichrist will anybody take a little triple six on their head if somebody comes and put it no dibrin you see and uh, moreover you see for everybody to worship one person as a god you see they should be having faith and belief on god but you know today we living in such a play, condition of this world that there is no oneness in the family there is no love and affection in the family and forget about god apostle paul clearly said that in the last days the perilous times shall come and men shall be lovers of you see themselves than lovers of god first timothy 4 chapter 1 to 3 please brother first timothy 4 chapter 1 to 3 can somebody read okay munaster please read first timothy 4 chapter 1 to 3 now the spirit is speaking expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to a seducing spirit and doctrines of devil speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a, a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from mirth which god had created to be uh, received with the thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth See? here apostle paul clearly tells uh, that in later days uh, they shall give heed to doctrines of devils uh, that means devil shall preach in the church it seems to you brethren so imagine if they will give to heed to doctrines of devil means do you think godliness will be there uh? huh? then how can everybody fall at a person's feet and worship him huh? they will depart from faith it seems uh, when faith itself is not there where will they go and seek god second timothy third chapter 1 to 4 second timothy third chapter 1 to 4 uh romi sister or amar brother can you read second timothy third chapter 1 2 3 4 <clears throat> okay this no also that is the last days uh the last time shall come for men shall be lovers uh, lovers of their own selves cocktails boasters proud blasphemers uh, disobedient to our parents uh-huh. unthankful see on the without nets affection really tells in the later days men shall be lovers of themselves than lovers of god it seems in such a case huh? they are disobedient to parents do you think they will go and worship god definitely not dear brethren so you see huh? there is no fear for god among the people no we self uh, where will they fear god they will go and worship ha uh, huh? one person person as god dear brethren you see devil you know the god of this world is expert uh, you see in blinding the eyes of many he is doing all these things uh, to divert the people from the real antichrist uh, and showing that it is a barcode it is a memory chip or else it is obama ah uh, all these various concepts so is bringing in this world to show that antichrist uh, you see is a different thing than what is mentioned in the bible uh, he is trying to deviate uh, from the real antichrist of then just think uh, what has satan got to do with the barcode you see if they put the barcode and don't put it has it got anything to do with the bible you see has god has got anything to do with if you go and purchase anything from the market if you don't purchase anything from the market no he is only worried about spiritual doctrines only then how can 
these concepts be the Antichrist, dear brethren, then who is the Antichrist? This one we need to study from the Bible. In the Bible, the Antichrist has been given various names. You see, it is called the man of sin, the son of perdition. Just now we read now, 2 Timothy, 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, 3rd verse. You see, it is called as the man of sin, the son of perdition. And again, you see, in the seventh verse, uh, you see, it says, uh, uh, the mystery of iniquity. You see, I read with her, verse 7. Uh, Romy sister, can you read 2 Thessalonians 2 7? Okay, uh, uh, okay, read. Sorry. Yes. For the mystery of the iniquity doth already work, only he who now uh, lit it will let until he be taken out of the way. See, the mystery of iniquity, the other name given to is is called as a mystery of iniquity. This was already working, it seems. Sir. Now, the third name that is given is the wicked one. Same chapter, eighth verse, sister. Huh. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, then shall the wicked be revealed. That means she is called as the wicked one. And Jesus, our Lord or Master, called him as the abomination that make it desolate. In Matthew 24, 15. So these are the various names that is given to the, the great Antichrist. Okay. Now, it is our responsibility as a Christian to come and detailly study what is the meaning of Antichrist. What is the meaning of Antichrist? First of all, before knowing what the Bible says, we need to understand the meaning of that word Antichrist. You see, huh? anti. Antichrist means what? You see? The people who are against Christ. Now you tell me, who, is, who are the people who are against Christ? Is it the Christians or who? Who are against Christ? Who can tell me? Besides Christian the Christians. Yes. Besides Christians, everybody are called as anti-Christ. Like for Jews, the heathen, the Muslims. You see? They are all anti-Christ. That means they are all against Christ. You see, this is one meaning of the word anti-Christ. But there is also another meaning also for the word anti-Christ. You see, the word anti, you see, means a different thing also. Like what? Like for example, anti-nationalist. Now who is anti-nationalist? You see, who is an Indian citizen who lives in India but works for the enemy. These people are called as anti-nationalist. Now here the word anti-nationalist means what? The person <clears throat> is of the same country, the birth country, but uh, is misusing and defaming uh, his uh, birth country and working against it. This is a meaning of anti-nationalist. You see? Therefore, similarly, anti-Christ in the Bible means what? It not only means the person who is against Christ, but it actually means a person who is in Christ. You see? But who is using, misusing the name of Christ? who is walking against Christ, who is doing things which are against Christ. This is the term Antichrist as per the Bible. You see, Antichrist means who? In, as per the Bible, the person who misrepresents, misinterprets, misuses the name of Christ. You see, 
and does things which are against Christ. This is the real meaning of the word Antichrist. Uh, let us read uh, 1 John 2nd chapter 18 19. Uh, Joel brother, can you read 1 John 2nd chapter 18 and 19? Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there there many Antichrists, whereby we know that is that it is the last time mm -hmm. they won they went out from wait, us. Wait, 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 one minute, brother. See, verse Satan clearly says that we are living in the last time, last days. And uh, we have heard that Antichrist is going to come. But Apostle John clearly says that uh, there are Antichrist. Uh, then itself it seems. Uh, you see, even now are there many Antichrist. Uh -huh. That means Antichrist was whom? From where he was there it seems. Even there, even from the days of the Apostles. Uh, then what is the meaning of Antichrist? How can a person live for more than nearly 2,000 years? So, Antichrist was there during the days of uh, Apostles itself, it seems. Uh, what is the Antichrist then? You see? Huh? Can he be a single person? What is it? Uh? Apostle John gives the answer in 1 John 2, 19. Continue, Joy brother. Verse 19, continue. Huh? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Ah, see, here the definition of Antichrist is clearly given that they were not out. You see, they went out from us. They were not of us. That is the reason they went out from us. For if they had been of us, you see, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. So they might be manifest. Then, you see, all are not of us. That means Antichrist is a group of people who are separated from the true church who separated from the true doctrines of the apostles and deviated from the truth. That is what this verse clearly means. Let us read Acts 20, verse 28 to 30. Acts chapter 20, 28 to 30. Uh, Munna Sita, can you read? Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer to feed the source of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise is speaking uh, per perverse thing the draw to draw of a disciple after them. Ah, you see? What is the first part clearly say? Ah, for I know this after my departure, who will come? Ma? Grievous wolves shall come with him. How will they come? Will they come uh, directly like wolf? Uh? No, no, no. They will come uh, wolf in sheep clothing. Uh. What will they do? They will not spare the flock. You see, they will uh, take the flock from the truth, it seems, uh, also of your own self. You see, also of your own self, uh, men shall arise, speak perverse things. You see, what they will do, it seems, uh, they will come and speak perverse things, means strong doctrines, uh, which are not there in the Bible. And draw the disciples away from them, it seems. So, dear brethren, here Apostle Paul clearly tells, you see, the qualification of Antichrist. That once they were there in the truth, but now they have deviated, they have gone out from the truth. What are they doing? They are gathering, you see, a group for themselves. They come like 
Uh, wolf in sheep clothing. Uh, what is the speaker? They speak perverse things uh, that draw away the disciples after them. You see, now, therefore, what is that Antichrist? Who is considered as Antichrist? Let us read 1 John 4, 1, 2, and 3. 1 John 4, chapter 1, 2, and 3. Mm. Okay, go for the read. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that con confesseth not the, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it, is it in the world. Ah, now already it is in the world. You see, Apostle John Clay said, believe not every spirit. You see, believe not every doctrine, but check the doctrines. Now how do you check it? You see, it tells uh, false prophets have gone into the world. You see, so how do you check it? If uh, anybody confesses that Jesus is come in the flesh, uh, that is the spirit of Christ. Uh, if anybody doesn't confess, it is like an anti system. You see, today, if you go and ask somebody, uh, what did they do? What do you tell? They tell them, Jesus himself came and died on the cross. God himself came and died on the cross. Uh, what does the Bible say? God sent his son to die on the cross. You see? And they don't even believe that Jesus came in the flesh. Uh, he was God who manifested and just uh, uh, transformed himself to die on the cross in the fleshly being. Immediately was changed and resurrected. You see, you know, first Paul clearly warns us, if anybody preaches those things, uh, you see, uh, recognize that this is a great antichrist system, which was there even then. You see, many, it seems, uh, Therefore, eh, dear brethren, Antichrist means what? By this verse, we come to know that it is not an individual. It can't be an individual. You see, because an individual person can't live for 2000 years from the days of apostles uh, till, uh, you see, till now. So, oh, who is this uh, Antichrist? It is not a single person at all, but Bible clearly says that's what you proved to you. Then who is Antichrist? You see, Jesus and his church members are compared to a human body, for which Jesus is his head and the body of the church. This is the seed of the woman that is going to bruise the serpent's head. We know this one very well. Okay. Now, similarly, Antichrist means what? False church means what? Satan should have developed the same concept. Head and the body. Huh? Christ means head and the body. False Christ means what? Antichrist means that also should be having head. That also should be having a body. Now who is the head for the system? You see? Huh? Yeah, one head is there. Now who is the body? It is the false members. The false Christians who believe in the false doctrines. These are the body members of, you see, the great uh, Antichrist system. So, what we are trying to tell is that Antichrist is not a single person or uh, that uh, is uh, dead. You see, Antichrist uh, is a system. Even as we speak about Jesus head and the body, what do we say? It is a church, it is a system. Similarly, the word Antichrist also means a corrupt religious system. You see, it means a system. Okay. Now, before proceeding further, we need to understand why Apostle Paul had to write about Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians letter. Correct? Now, we need to understand because he wrote two letters to the Thessalonica. One was the first letter, one was the second letter. Okay. Now, why did, uh, you see, uh, you know, uh, 
What did you write? Let us read 1st Thessalonians 5th chapter 1 and 4. 1st Thessalonians 5th chapter verses 1 and 4. Uh, Joel brother, can you read? But of the times, times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that they should overtake you as a thief. Very good, brother. So, regarding this one, which one? Regarding the second coming of Jesus, it is not required that I should write unto you. But you, brethren, are in darkness. You are not in darkness uh, that, uh, that they should overtake uh, you like a thief. So here Apostle Paul clearly says, uh, you see, that uh, that day shall not overtake you like a thief. That means the second coming. Uh, the church will know about the second coming, it seems. Uh, that's what Apostle Paul is saying. Uh, as soon as Apostle Paul wrote the first letter to Thessalonica, Everybody of the Sisonika church began to claim that second coming has already happened when during the days of Apostles Paul itself. To correct them, Apostle Paul writes the second letter to the Sisonians very clearly says, second chapter verses 1 to 3, don't be shaken in mind. Don't believe anybody's words. But just Understand identification about Christ's second coming. What is the identification? Before the Lord should come, first what should happen? They should be falling away first. That means the church should fall away from the truth. Then who should come? The man of sin. The son of perdition should come. Then only what will happen? Jesus' second coming will come. It is because of the confusion of the first letter Apostle Paul gave the clear clarity in the second Thessalonians, uh, you see, second chapter, uh, you see, verses uh, 1 to 3. He gives a beautiful explanation. Okay. Now, we also saw in first, uh, second Thessalonians, second chapter, uh, fourth verse, what will Antichrist do? He will come and sit in the temple and show himself to be God. You see, but everybody will worship him as God, it seems. Uh. Okay. Now, what is this temple? Eh? Who is the temple of God? Who can tell me? Who is the temple of God? Yeah. We. Very good. We, the church, are the temple of the living God. First Corinthians 6.19. So, if uh, Antichrist has to come, then where should he come? He should come inside the church. You see? He should come inside the church. You see, dear brethren, how will they come with him? Sir? They won't come directly. They will draw the disciples away from the truth by speaking, you see, words in hypocrisy. You see? Uh, second Thessalonians, second chapter, third verse. Read, brother. Go, brother, read. Huh. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Ah, you see? Clearly, what does it say? Let no man deceive you. First, what should happen? A falling away should happen. Then the son of uh, uh, the man of sin uh, is revealed to him, sir. Okay, now what is this falling away? That means uh, the church, when the apostles lived, it was very firm in the truth, uh, very strong in the truth. Uh, but here the verse says, first they should fall down, it seems, uh, fall away from the truth, it seems. Uh, you see, that means uh, how will the church fall away? Huh? By false doctrines. False doctrines should come inside the church. Then only the church will fall from the truth. We read this verse already. Acts 20, chapter 28 to 30. What did the Apostle Paul say? 
Take it, therefore, you see, to the flock, uh, over which the Holy, God has, Holy Ghost has made you the overseer, to feed the church, uh, which he has purchased with his own blood. Uh, you see? For I know that after my departure, what will happen to him, sir? Uh, dip, uh, who will come? Uh? You see? Wolf will come. But they won't come like wolf. They will come in sheep clothing. Pretend to be like a sheep, but actually it is a wolf. You see, who shall daringly, don't even bother. You see, daringly, huh? they, you see, deceive the church by speaking false things, wrong doctrines, it seems, dear brethren. And they will draw the disciples after them. You see, instead of uh, drawing them towards Christ. So what should happen? You see, for the Antichrist, you see, the false doctrine should come. You see, because of which uh, the church should develop in a first way. You see, then only what will happen? The great Antichrist system will be revealed. Okay. Now, regarding false doctrine coming inside the church, you see, did Jesus mention in any way? Yes. Jesus mentioned this one in the parable of the mustard seed. Read with her. Matthew 13, 31 to 32. Mm. Who can read? Okay. Uh, Gopal Buddhar or Rashish Buddhar. Mm. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the list of all seeds, but when it when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the bird of the air come and laws in the branches thereof. Ah, you see, a parable, ah, a kingdom of heaven like a mustard seed, which a man sowed in his, sea, in his field. It is the least of all the seeds, but when it began to grow, it began to grow a big herb and became a tree. The birds of the air came and nested. Okay. Now, what is this uh, meaning? For the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. The man who is sowing the seed is none other than the son of man. The seed is the seed of faith. The seed of the faith that is being sowed. You see, the Christianity, the faith. Jesus said, no, your faith should be, how much? Like a small mustard seed. So the faith of Christianity, Jesus sowed in this world. It was the smallest of all the faith. What happened, it seems? It began to grow into a herb and became a tree, it seems. You tell me, mustard, can you see a plant or a tree? You have in Nepal, no? You see, no? Mustard, you tell me. Is it a plant or is it a tree? It is a plant. And it is a plant. But how did uh, Jesus tell that it is going to be a tree? Here it means abnormal growth. You see, the intention was to be a plant only, eh? but it began to be a great tree, seems. That means what? The intention of sowing Christian faith in this world was to gather a little flock from the world. But what happened? A huge Christian denomination is formed. Today, you know, the highest collection, where does it happen? Financial collection, contributions. It is not in Tirupati, in India. It is in Vatican City, in Rome. The highest collection happens. You see, how much funds did Jesus collect? <laughs> you tell me. Huh? Here, you see, the plant became a great tree. Such that the birds of the air came and nested, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of birds of the air? Jesus told in the parable of the sower, you see, the seed went and fell on the roadside. The birds of the air came and picked it up. Jesus explains clearly that the birds of the air means the devil, the Satan. Even as uh, the God's word is being sowed, he will come and pick it up. You see, that means birds in the Bible means the devil. Now, devil, the Satan, will he come and uh, put his nest? Uh, he did not go to some other branch. Uh, he went and came to this tree. You see, in each and every branches, the devil has put his own nest. 
read revelation 82 uh, revelation 82 Am amra brother can you read revelation 82 18 18 and the cried mm. and mm. he cried mightily with a strong voice mm. saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and mm. if the habitations of devils and devils and the uh, whole of every fall spirit and a uh, case of every unclean and uh, hateful bar. See, what has become Babylon? It has become the habitation of devil. Every unclean bird, uh -huh. every unclean bird has come and nested, settled in the branch. You see, deep. then, so where uh, Satan has come and dwelt? Uh, he has got no work in uh, in uh, temples or mosque. He is working in the church. Read First Timothy four chapter one two three. Uh, Munna Sutra, can you read First Timothy four chapter one two and three? Down the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Ah, forbidding. Oh, Mister, what is he? You see, huh? What will happen is him, sir? Huh? In the last days, uh, you see. Uh, they will give heed to doctrines of devil, it seems. Sir. So, if they have to give ear to doctrines of devil, where is the devil should come and preach? Uh? You see, if you go and preach in temple or a mosque, will the Christians listen? You see, no. Then, the devil, where should he come? He should come in the church and preach in the church. Uh, you see, uh, read uh, Revelation, 2nd chapter, 12 and 13. Revelation, 2nd chapter, 12 and 13. Okay, Gopal Brother, please read. Mm. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, This thing said he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know that thy work and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, hmm? and thou holdest. Even where Satan's seat is, it seems, sir. He is writing to the church of Pergamos and saying, I know where you are, even where Satan's seat is there. Aha, that means where is Satan? He has come and seated in the church. Continue, brother. Huh? And thou holdest fast my name. And has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Where is Satan? Tell, dwelleth. Satan is coming and dwelt in the tree. Dear brethren, therefore, the branches, the tree, huh? you see, <laughs> where? Satan is there. They tell, no, oh, oh, which church you go? Oh, my church is so big. We have branch here, there, we have branch here, everywhere branches, branches. Okay, good. But who is there in the branches? The devil, the doctrines of devil. Now, what is the doctrines of devil? Munna sister, read now. From where you stopped, continue. Hmm. Forbidding to marry and ah, commanding. First doctrine, first doctrine is forbidding to marry. Now, you tell me, now, is there anything wrong in getting married? No. Bible in Hebrews 13.4 it says marriage is honorable in all. So there is nothing wrong in getting married. God himself connected the first marriage in Garden of Eden. Now how will he tell somebody to not get married? No. 
that is the false doctrine, the doctrine of the devil. Okay. Now, can a bishop marry? Can a bishop marry or not? Okay. Let us read. Uh, Romishta, read. First Timothy 3 2. First Timothy 3 2, Romishta. Okay, brother. A bishop then must be blameless and the husband of one wife. Ah, husband of how many wife? One wife. That means he one. can marry. He should be having how many wife? Only one wife, not multiple. You see? But today, do the bishops marry? They tell, no, 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 we should not marry. Forbidding to marry the doctrines of devil. Bible clearly says this is the doctrine of devil. Next. Next, continue. Munastar, from where you stop, continue. Mm. And commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which mm. believe and know the truth. See, forbidding to eat meat. Now, when do the Christians don't eat meat? You know, when? Good Friday. Or some people, every Friday. You see, all in the Lent period. You see, they won't eat meat. Why? Oh, Jesus died Friday. Oh, we don't eat meat on Fridays. What does the Bible say? Forbidding to eat meat, which God has promised to eat by thanksgiving. These are the doctrines of devil, dear brethren. So, who is the Antichrist, if you see? The one who is in Christ, who is preaching false teachings in Christ and drawing the disciples away from the truth, this is the great Antichrist system. This is the doctrines of devil. Through the doctrines of devil, Satan is preaching false things in the church and deviating the people from the one true truth and God. So, Jesus mentioned about this one in, in the parable, first parable. He also mentioned in the second parable also. Let us read second parable, Matthew 13, 33. Matthew 13, 33. Joel Buddha, can you read Matthew 13, 33? Another parable is, spake he unto them, the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is like unto living which a woman took and he He'd hide in their measure of meal till the whole was living. Okay. Jesus spoke another parable to the kingdom of heaven, which women took. You see, it is like a living which a woman took and hid it in three measures of meal. You know, living yeast. What happens to the you see food? If you put a little bit living, it gets spoiled. So here, nobody puts leaven to the food. But here, the woman put the leaven to the food itself. Now, what is the meaning of leaven in the Bible? Bible is a Bible's dictionary. Leaven means false doctrines. Let us read Matthew 16, 11. Uh, Amar brother, please read Matthew 16, 11. How is that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you uh, concerning bread that ye should beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Ah, the living of the Pharisees and Sadducees means they preach false doctrine. So Jesus was saying to the disciples, be careful about their false doctrines. So what happened there? A woman took a little bit of false doctrine and hid it to the three measures of me. That means the church had three important doctrines. For the three important doctrine, this false church put little bit of false doctrines. So what happened? Three important doctrines got corrupted. What is the three important doctrines? You see? 
love, hope, and faith. Where is it given? Read. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Go for brother, read. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Okay, brother. This hmm. right. Corinthians 13, 13. Mm -hmm. And now abided faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. See, these three, that was the main foundation doctrine for the church. Faith, hope, and charity, love. You know what happened? Satan used to put the false little bit doctrines. For what? For love, hope, faith. Everything got corrupted. You know, love. People had supreme love on the Lord now. What did Jesus say? If anybody has to love the Lord, he has to love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all the mind. But what happened? You see, the love on God itself went away. Instead of loving God, they began to love huh? men and fear God. You see? Huh? Now, people go to churches on Sunday, Sunday. Why did they go? They go regularly because if they don't go, what will happen? Something bad will happen. Something evil will happen. You see? Read Isaiah 29.13. Isaiah 29.13. Munan sister, can you read Isaiah 29.13? Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the worship of man. Mm, their fear is taught by the worship of men. If you don't come, you'll go to hell. Judgment will happen. He will punish you. Only all these things. So what has happened? The love upon God went off. Simply they go, take the Bible. They don't even read the Bible. Don't even understand the Bible. Nothing. So love on the Lord is totally gone because of little bit of false doctrine. Next is hope. What is hope of the church? That if you will suffer with Christ today, you can live with him. You can reign with him. You see, so that was the hope, dear brethren. But the hope totally went off. Now receive the blessings of the Lord. Now enjoy. Rejoice. Be rich. Live abundantly. Pleasurable life. Luxurious life. And tomorrow after death, you can go to heaven and sit next to Jesus with all these luxurious things in your mind. Is the, this is what the Bible says. Read 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2.12. Uh, Joel Bhattar, read. If we suffer, we shall also reason with him if we deny him, he also will deny us. If we suffer with him, we will rule with him. We will reign with him. You see? Dear brethren, so what happened? Huh? So if we suffer with him, we shall rule with him. So suffering, a part of the Christian was compulsory, but now there is no suffering at all. If there is any suffering, oh, they will start crying. Oh, you, you. Oh. What does the Bible say? It is must if you want to reign with Christ. You see, the suffering concept itself went off. Rejoicing, enjoying, uh, living a luxurious life, dear brethren. The last one is faith. Faith on what? Faith on the most holy faith, the Bible. That completely went off on the church leaders, fathers, pastors. Having faith on them instead of the word of God. So what happened? So totally, the truth got uh, Corrupted. So this is how you see the great antiquity system slowly developed. We'll stop here. Next week we will continue the class.